Hi friends, welcome to Life with Leverly. I'm your host, Brittany Shogren. I'm excited to share my heart with you beyond the 15 seconds we get on Instagram. Grab a nice coffee and let's do life together. Hi friends, welcome back to today's episode of Life with Leverly. I am so excited to have a special guest back in the studio today, um, Jen Bowie. Welcome, Jen. Hello, hello. Excited to be back. How are you? I am great. I'm great. Excited for summer. I know, right? Are your kids out of school yet? They have one more day tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I feel like this is such a busy time just with schedules changing, like kids camp starting, Mm -hmm. like, and even really the last two weeks before the school year ends it's just like there's so much going on yes what's the new nickname for may may simber because it's just so crazy (laughs) that's so true i've never thought of it but it's may has always been like a crazy month for my family just growing up my mom and my brother both of their birthdays are in may my mom's birthday is usually always falls around like mother's day Mm -hmm. so it's like mother's day her birthday my brother's birthday and then my dad his like busy time with his tennis team is always in the month of May. So it's just, I feel like in graduations and then now I have a family of my own and like their schedules, May is just always like, and it seems like it doesn't ever get much better. It really doesn't. (laughs) And I don't know why every year I'm always surprised by it. I'm like, why am I not learning by this? I'm beginning to keep in my mind, like thinking of mindset is that May is a transitional month and I need to be prepared for that, prepare my family for that. So I think next year. We're going to, we're going to go swell. Yeah. I know, right? You're like coming <laughs> yes. soon. <laughs> well, Jen and her husband, Billy, came to um, meet with our team a few weeks ago, and it was awesome. We They kind of helped us to work through some, like, values and communication that we have within our business, and it was such a cool time for them to pour into us and us to share what like our business values were and then to kind of just share a lot of ways that we can like work together as a company Mm -hmm. um, and having values and the importance of that. But I thought it would be really cool to bring her back on the podcast because you guys absolutely loved the first episode that um, Jen did with us last season where we talked all about mindset But this time we wanted to talk a little bit more about values Mm -hmm. and how as a person or as a family, you can create your own set of values and kind of the importance around that. So that's really where we're going to kick off today's episode. And then we have some listener submitted questions to ask Jen. Uh, So I feel like it will be a really exciting episode. It'll be a great conversation. Yeah, values are are one of those things that I think most people, it's it's not a sexy thing to talk about. It feels very boring, almost like goals. But when you think about your values and you really start looking at these words and your your heart on the inside just lights up because you're like, yes, that's so important for me. Values really help you understand like what you're all about. And they're Mm -hmm. so very unique for each of us. So whenever we can sit down, look at, a long list of words or maybe just 20 to 25 words and really peel back this is what's so important for me it really helps you understand yourself and I think right. one thing that sets us apart from any other creation in the world is that we can name our emotions we can name what's important to us and I just think whenever we can do that as humans it makes us feel so understood yeah. I love John Maxwell's quote that says if you can know yourself you can lead yourself mm-hmm. and once we know ourselves and can lead ourselves then we can also know others and lead others so I think if you're in any position of influence or you want to be a leader or you're a mom or you're a great boss, we all have influence at some level. So whenever we get to know ourselves, it's a great way for us to be able to propel that forward. And one way we can do that is through values. It's such an easy way um, to be able to be self-aware about what's important for us. And I feel like too, once if there's like an issue of conflict or something in your life that happens and you're like, I just don't feel like like this is feels uneasy to me for whatever reason it's probably because one of something that you value is yeah. not happening or it's just like pinging at you for some reason but like identifying and knowing like this is my value I'm not going past that yes I think um I wish I would have identified like some values for myself earlier in life so that when I was having some of these like questioning times being like I don't agree with that but like why exactly is that, Mm -hmm. you know, whereas like now I'm like, well, this is a value of mine. So if that doesn't fall in line and then I'm more at like peace with moving past the decision. Yes. 
That's right. And, and really kind of putting your flag in the ground for, mm -hmm. for something specific, which is why values are also so great for setting boundaries and knowing what you stand for and why you stand for it. Something I let my clients do is not only pick the words of their top five values, but I also have them define it because respect could mean something completely different to you than it does for me. Respect mm -hmm. for you could mean obey authority and make sure you're doing what people are asking you to do. But respect for me could be more, you're respecting my space, you're respecting mm -hmm. my time. So it's less about authority, but it's more about this personal choice. And I think you're dead on because whenever we come into conflict with other people, it's really, really helpful to know what our own personal values are. And to first ask, is this a, is this a thing that I'm mad at with the other person? Or is this really something where they're just not valuing something that I value? And a situation that comes to mind is me and my husband, Billy. I value orderliness, and that's because my brain, with four kids and running a business, I just can't think if the house is chaotic. Mm -hmm. And for him, he's a creative, and he's all over the map, and he he actually thrives in like non-orderliness. <laughs> And so, you know, he could look at that and tell me I'm OCD and I'm, I'm, you know, ridiculous, but he doesn't. He knows that that's a value of mine. And so he helps me straighten up the house every night. We just do a little spruce and everything's kind of set, at least on our main level. But I love that he sees that in me and he understands why it's so important. And whenever my value is honored, then I am much more likely to go and honor your value. And I'm a kinder person and I, my needs are really being met, right? So, um, yeah, I, I think understanding that sometimes the conflict actually really isn't with the other person. It's just simply a difference of value. Right. And I feel like that's like just some really good marriage advice too, is kind of mm -hmm. figuring out and maybe even sitting down with your spouse and kind of going through like, what are your values? I know um, you've mentioned defining like family values on top of just values like personal values so mm -hmm. maybe you could tell us a little bit about like why that's important and kind of just yeah how you guys have utilized that in your life yeah so when Billy and I first kind of started dating we like you were mentioning earlier coming really into the relationship knowing what we each valued and making sure those values align they don't need to be the same but we want to make sure that at some level they're going to be play well together mm -hmm. and then whenever we got married even before we had kids we set up five to seven values that we just said this is what our marriage is about Whenever we think about how we invest our time, how we spend our money, what we're going to be involved in, the type of people that we're going to allow into our like inner sphere of influence, they need to be about these values. And if they're not, then that's fine, but we're going to move forward with a lot of confidence knowing what we want for our lives. Mm -hmm. And so as we brought kids into the world, the really cool thing about values is you get to tell your kids who they are inside the values. Mm -hmm. um, one of our biggest ones is generosity. That's not just with money. That's with your time. That's with your resources. That's with your smiles, your hugs, your words of, of encouragement to other people. And so that's something we speak of our kids all the time. You are a buoy and you are generous. This is who you are. This is what's expected of you. And this is how you're going to behave. And they, they, they're called up to something better. And so when we have those and they know the Bowie family values, they know exactly who they need to be and what they're, what they're all about. And so you also get to discipline around those values. You get to create environments and create experiences around those values. I think we go to Disney World, I don't know, five to eight times a year because we're crazy like that. That's just where we invest our money. But one of our values is experience. Mm -hmm. So everything we do, we try to make an experience, whether it's going and doing a picnic in the park, whether it's going to Stone Mountain, it's all about experience. Why? Because that's a value for us. And we want to make sure that more than anything, we give our kids memories. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot of importance. So if you don't have family values or you haven't really thought about it, I encourage you to sit down and really look through like, what are the top five to seven? Look with your spouse. If you're a single mom raising kids, you get to decide that for your kids. If you're not married yet, you could decide for yourself who you are and what you stand for. So that when you're looking for that spouse, you're making sure those values align with who you are and what you want for your future. I know one thing that we talked about with the Loverly Gray team is that values not only inspire you currently where you are, but you also aspire to be them. So am I generous all the time? No, because I'm selfish and I'm human and all these things, but I aspire to be a certain level of generosity because I'm telling myself that's who I right. am. So you get to put even values down on the paper that you may say, I'm not there yet. And I get to be that person more and more. So I think it's exciting to think about your family values. Um, also, you get to set healthy family boundaries around that. Mm -hmm what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. Um, we don't allow sleepovers for our kids right now. I just think the world's a little bit crazy, but there's a value inside there for us that 
it just is what it is. And then we don't have to apologize about it. We don't have to feel bad about it. It's just, this is just who we are. Right. So it's a great way for you to build confidence with your spouse and as a family. And then two, for your kids to know what they're standing up for. And I'm sure your kids probably see like your confidence mm-hmm. in these decisions and so then they're just like, this is just a rule. Like, this is that's just it. what it is. And we're okay with that, you yep. know, because that's like, a, there's a solid foundation. You guys have laid out what these values are and it's very evident. Um, one thing I remember, I guess it was like maybe two or three years ago, I decided that one of my values just kind of in my personal life and one in my business was going to be kind being kind, kindness, and the way I responded back to people, if they were negative or ugly to me, I had that opportunity to like choose kindness. Mm -hmm. And even though I felt like I was always like a kind person before, but it was like, I kind of had to make this statement, like I am choosing this going forward, no matter what I'm putting the word kind next to my name so it also holds you accountable I love that yes like there's been several times and again I'm not perfect I'm sure there's been a message or two that I was just like throwing kindness out the window like responding back with the way I really felt but you know it's it's held me accountable to make sure that like when people come to my page or they get some like breath of me like I want them to feel like okay this she's like a kind person Mm -hmm. um a response back might be like firm, but it can still be kind. That's right. Yes. So uh, the accountability I think is what really started or I kind of saw that that was important. And so then adding some of these other values into place, but I can only imagine just accountability within your family and within your life. Like you kind of set this standard for yourself. That's it. Yeah. And if you really like a visual for all my visual people out there, I, I'm one of those your values are like your compass. So instead of just kind of walking around blindly, not really knowing which direction you're going in the woods, you have your compass and this is who you are. Exactly what you're saying. It's holding you accountable. And this is how I'm going to respond. It's a way to live intentionally. And when we live intentionally and we know what direction we're going, you gain confidence. Mm -hmm. I think so many of us are out there looking for confidence and it's because of culture today. We're looking to the left, we're looking to the right, whatever, what's everybody else doing? You're borrowing this, you're borrowing that from people and you really aren't sitting down with yourself and saying, what am I about? Mm -hmm. What's unique to me? What's in my life story that makes this so important? And then sticking with that and, and being convicted by that and saying, it's okay for me to own my story, own what's important for me, and have that compass, exactly what you're talking about. Because it's already in you, that's the thing. The values are already in you right now, it's just you discovering what those are, and you putting a name on them, and then you living with intention. Right, so it kind of feels like if maybe you are somebody listening to this right now that is kind of just unsure of what your values are or you're unsure of like where you are in life right now, this might be an exercise that can really help you gain some clarity Mm -hmm. and go in the direction you really want to go. And it's, this is a free exercise that anybody can do. And, and it takes just like you really sitting down and thinking about like, what do you want to stand for? Mm -hmm. Um, Last year, Nichelle and I wrote out values for Leverly Gray and I remember thinking like, okay, this will take like, this isn't going to, you know, this will take an hour. We're going to sit down, write out some things. And it it ended up taking like half a day because we just started going over like, what is really important? Mm -hmm. Like, what do we really want to like hold true to Leverly Gray? Like, what are some things? And I think even words that I was just like, yeah, of course we do that. But putting it down on paper Mm -hmm. and holding ourselves accountable kind of made it felt like more official. Sure. Yeah. So doing that within your own life is just going to give you that opportunity to, you know, just hold yourself accountable. So if you're wanting to do this exercise, it's just a quick, easy process or a stepped process. I just want you to go online and just look up value words. You're going to find all kinds of lists. It doesn't need to be an exhaustive list, but print out a list and just go through that list and highlight any words that jump out at you, any words that touch your heart or you're saying, ooh, yeah, that's really important to me. Chances are you're going to highlight more than you think you will. It <laughs> always happens. And then you start getting excited because you see these words and you're like, wow, this is exciting. This is fun. And what I want you to do, no matter how many you've highlighted, is I want you to get down to your top 20 or 15. And then once you get down to those, I want you to then really narrow it down to the top 10, your top 10 values 
From there, I want you to define them. What does each of those words mean? Why is it important whenever you think about that value word? What is really pulling at the importance of your heart? And then narrow those down to your top five. And then those top five are what you're gonna live from. And just start asking yourself, how am I living out of this value? I had a client last week, we were talking through values. And she's just really kind of in this funk right now. She doesn't really feel super alive and she's being a little bit hard on herself. And she came out of this exercise with her number one value being fun and play. And so I asked her, how are you operating out of this value? And she said, I'm not. Like I feel so dead inside because I'm realizing this whole creative side of me that feels like 80% of me, I have totally squashed. And I told myself, I just need to grind and work and you know, kind of live up to these success measures that I actually really don't even want to live up to. Mm -hmm. So through this whole exercise, she has totally blossomed this 80% of her life out of this fun and play value that she's now getting to incorporate. And it's been life changing for her, which is super cool. I remember we earlier this year or last year, I really decided like a word for my year and kind of like things I just always wanted to like incorporate into my day was based off of this word. And we've talked a little bit about this on the pop on the podcast before, but Lane, um, our podcast producer, she came to us earlier in the year when we were all as a team discussing what our words of the year were. And one of hers was intention and being intentional. And I just remember like immediately falling in love with that as well. And there were so many things that we had like ideas coming up and things that we were going to be doing with the business. And it felt like a light bulb clicked because it was like, I was so motivated by this word to like live out every day with intention and, and doing things with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's funny how that can kind of spawn like a way of life for you, which is very similar when you identify what these values can be, like you have the freedom and it, like it, it's almost freeing like you, like your client, once she started living out in this more fun and playful way, she probably felt like so free that she was like able to do exactly what she wanted to. Yes, that's like giving yourself permission. Mm -hmm. And it's super validating, like deep at the core of who you are, of like, yes, like this is why, this is why I feel so dead because I'm not not living out of this one thing that's, yes, that's like makes me come alive. I feel like the word confidence comes to mind too. Mm -hmm. Like when you've identified your values and you you know, are living them out, like you're confident in life. And then you're not worried about what other people are thinking about you because you're following your values that you've identified as important to you. And you're confident that those mean something to you. And I just feel like you probably will have like this, like higher step of just like knowing what you're doing. Exactly. Yes. You stand up taller, your shoulders are back. And whenever you see other people excelling or succeeding or doing their own unique thing, you're going to be applauding for them because you know what you stand for. Mm -hmm. You feel really solid in you because you're standing into that, that confidence. And it's, it's a great way for you to filter all of your decisions. So now you have a framework. You're not, again, you're not blindly just making decisions. Now you're understanding why you're making those decisions, why you're saying yes and why you're saying no. So for any of those out there, including myself, who like to say yes to everything, this is a great way for you to have a framework to think through to say, I'm going to say no to this because it just doesn't really align with me. Mm-hmm. At the core of personal transformation is self-awareness, alignment, and action. And this values exercise hits all three of those. You become more self-aware of what you desire and want out of life. It, it becomes more aligned with who you truly are. And then you're able to take action based on what these values are. This is like the one exercise and mindset work that I will tell clients time and time and time again. I know it sounds so silly. It actually sounds so simple. You want to skip it, but please don't skip it. Um, And I even had another client two weeks ago. We had this one conversation and for 45 minutes, we talked about one of her values and her eyes were pouring with tears because it just the depth of what this one value meant for her. It just opened up just a whole nother realm of awareness about her relationship with her father and why things are so important and why she really wanted to be who she was becoming. It was just really cool. So just don't overlook it. There's a lot here for sure. Well, I polled our listeners and we got some really great questions that I think can really tie into this value conversation. And with some of these questions and 
with your answers, I think a lot of this can help some mm-hmm. of our listeners kind of understand the importance of identifying values a little bit better. And maybe in some situations they can even relate to. Yeah. So I figured we would just go through a few of these questions and then whatever you can answer or add to, I think would be super helpful. Let's do it. So the first question, let's go into extended family boundaries, how to set them. If, I mean, it's, if you have a family or supposed to spend time with them, but maybe they don't align with your values. Like how can you be okay with saying no or yes around family boundaries? I think for a situation like this, I think, I think it can be hard with families because there's a lot of expectations there. Right. So I think the first step in this is deciding what you want. Mm -hmm. What do you want for your family? What do you want for your family? unit what do you want your kids to experience Um, billy and i have experience with this firsthand and you're going to ruffle feathers so part of it is you're going to have to be okay with standing up for what you want so those of us again who are people pleasers might be a little bit difficult but again you have this foundation of values from which you're living and, and standing by you also have to be thinking about what is the consequence of not standing up for what you really want Right. Um, I tell my clients oftentimes, like you teach people how to treat you. So if you're going to teach people that you're going to bend the rules just for them, or you're going to bend the rules just for family expectations, then that's going to be something that you're putting yourself under. So really thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And with extended family boundaries, I, I, it's more for me, it comes down to deciding what you want and then just upholding the boundary for yourself right? and not really pleasing the other family members. I remember when I really bumped into this with my own family, there was a lot of, well, this is just how we do it. Right. These are just the traditions that you're going to come to. These are just the things that I don't care what you say, you're coming. Mm -hmm. To which I said, I appreciate that, but I'm a grown woman and this is what I've decided. And I respect and honor that for you. But for me and my family, it's going to look a little bit different because here's what we're building. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And did it hurt feelings and were people disappointed? A hundred percent. But when you do it with confidence and you do it with honor and say, I love you, I respect you, I understand that that's your wish for me. And also here's what I'm doing. I mean, at the end of the day, if they love you, they're going to respect you. But so I think it's all also too in the delivery of how you input those boundaries. For sure. It kind of reminds me about like, the holidays and like Christmas time and how I think people get so bogged down with like the expectation because this is just a family tradition that we have to do and they run around like crazy people and it's like I don't even want to do this like I don't even like xyz event but I'm going because I feel forced to do it yes and you don't have to do that that's it yeah you know you get to decide I think it was Billy and I's very first married Thanksgiving 13 years ago and I think we went to five homes and by 6 p.m. we looked at each other we're like well we're never doing that again (laughs) whatever that was we're not doing that again do we love all of them yes do we want to see all of them yes but really who missed out it was us right because we couldn't even put a piece of food in our mouth because we were too busy catching up with people and we spent more time in the car driving all around Atlanta than we actually did spending quality time so we missed out right. so it's also you got to think about that for you and then and then when you put kids in the equation it's like gosh well then my kids are missing out too right and so just be confident and understand your why why are you putting the boundary and and being convicted and understanding what you're actually really protecting so don't protect other people's feelings protect what you're trying to create Yeah, I love that. All right, the next question is, um, this person said, I'm burnout in my career. How should I not feel shameful for leaving a specific work role if I want to do something different or better? Mm. Okay, so I have this love-hate relationship with shame because if you're human, you feel shame. I think Mm -hmm. oftentimes so many of us feel shame. We don't even know we feel shame. But man, I feel shame all the time. So Mm -hmm. you're not alone in that. Shame really comes from us not feeling like enough. At the end of it, I mean, at the end of the day, that's really where it stems from. So sometimes whenever we're feeling shameful, usually somewhere in our thinking, you're going to hear the word, if you really pay attention to your thoughts, is should. Mm -hmm. I should be doing. I should not be leaving. I should be happy where I'm at. So my first thing that I would say to you is pay attention to what you're telling yourself you should or shouldn't be doing. Most times whenever we say should, we're shaming ourselves. So I would challenge you to change should to could. And maybe we mentioned this on the last podcast, 
but that can be just such a small little tweak in your mindset work that really truly changes the game so if you ask yourself like why am i feeling shame what is it that you feel like you're not living up to or what is it that you feel like you need to be doing that you're not doing um, and then my other thing is oftentimes we're living up to the success standards of other people. Mm -hmm. So my thought here is probably somewhere in this person's work role life or maybe what they really want to do with their life, they might be living underneath the definition of somebody else's success. You know, oftentimes our parents want us to be lawyers or doctors or these like specific roles. And nowadays you can do whatever you want. Right. There's social media. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like you're doing what? Like, I don't understand that. That's not really a title. But again, you get to decide what you want to be success for your life. And so I think really getting crystal clear, why do you want to make that work role change? Why is it important to you? And why is that really actually aligned with the person who you really are? Here's the thing. You're not going to convince anybody else if you're not individually convinced for you. So anytime I make a big move like that, I have to make sure I'm selling myself first, that I'm 100% convicted. And once I am, then other people will also meet your confidence because they're like, oh, okay, I don't really see how this is going to work. I mean, I'm sure you had a little bit of that, right? When you went into yeah. like blogging, they're like, wait, blogging? Like what? Right. I know you've shared some of that story. It's definitely like, I think some with this question, it's also like a little bit of like, there's an internal like scary part that is like, this is what I've known. Like I have, you know, I went to medical school. I've been a doctor for this long, but maybe now I'm burnt out, but I feel like this obligation to keep going because that's what's expected of me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, but like you have the power to decide like where you want to hold yourself and like what your expectation for yourself is. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think there's always this like scary part that's like, well, what if I make the wrong decision? Sure. Yes. And also that reminds me, a lot of people are afraid to start over. Like I'm mm -hmm. starting over. Well, what if you're actually not starting over? Um, my thought back to you would be, what if you're taking all your experience, all the skills, all the things that make you unique and you're just taking it into a different field, right. but you're not starting over. And Okay, so what if it's the wrong choice, but what if it's the right choice? Right. What if it's a thing that makes you come alive? I mean, what if you never even tried blogging? Right. I mean, could you imagine? No. You would still be doing sales, <laughs> right? Which is fine, but what a better life you've created for yourself by yeah. just jumping ship. And Here's the thing. It. You can always go back. You can always right. go back to a role you were once in. Exactly. I think it's just like the confidence, but then going back to values, like you could be living out like the best version of your values that yes. you are... Maybe you're in a role right now that you don't love and your values aren't shining through. And it's, you're at like a, the reason you have this like crossroad in your mind is because it's exactly that. Like it, it doesn't feel like it's fueling your fire anymore. That's it. Yes. Bet on yourself. Yeah. Bet on yourself. No one's going to bet on you if you're unwilling to bet on yourself. Mm -hmm. So just bet on yourself. And here's the thing. Ask yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen? You're going to figure it out. You're, you're going to find a way back to success. You're, but here's the reality, 99.9% .9 of the time, none of us have to deal with the worst case scenario. So I say go for it. Rethink your thinking and think in a way that your future self would want you to think and the way you need to think in order for you to too, just do that next step. Love it. All right, our next question is, how can I change my mindset of fearing something from happening again? And I'll give you a little bit of backstory on this specific question she was referring to she had cancer and she is in remission but now she's just constantly worried about what if it comes back what if it comes back what you know and so she's like i want to train my mind to get past that sure but i don't know how because the thought is always in the back of my mind on what if the cancer comes back mm -hmm. yes and i think we could all resonate there's right. something right horrible that's happened or, or or just right trauma from some specific place in our life i think you know the first thing that comes to mind for me is that we have to remember that what we focus on gets bigger mm -hmm. so the more we focus on thoughts like that the more that we are going to feel it grow and grow and grow and grow so for me i would be thinking about what is it in life right now that she gets to do now that the cancer is not there? Mm -hmm. What is she able to experience and really focus where she's currently at? Because the reality is, if it comes back, 
she's going to deal with it then, but why make yourself deal with it right here and right now? And I feel like kind of, if anything, it's like, you know what it's like to be in that seat where cancer is holding you down and you get this opportunity to go do all the things that, you know, you want to do in case it does come back. Right. So living that like free life, it almost feels like is that's the direction to kind of go in. Yes. I talk a lot with my clients about power. Mm -hmm. What has the power? If you don't have the power, something else has the power. But the only way the other thing gets the power, whether it's a person, a thing, is through access through you. You're giving it permission. So for me in this circumstance, I would probably challenge you and say, how is the cancer still having the power? And how can you actually get that power back? What can you tell the cancer? What can you tell yourself in that moment for you to grab that power back? To, to, so to exactly to your point is live life to the fullest to kind of give cancer the middle finger. Right. And when if it comes back, then you know how to deal with it. You know what, what's happened before. You're going to be well equipped, but keeping your mind focused on the gratitude and what you currently have right now in front of you. Because I think if we keep putting cancer right here in the front, then cancer gets the power. And, right. and I think she's probably feeling that at some level. Um, all right. Our next question. This person said, I feel like I have everything that I've ever wanted, but I'm still not happy. Yeah. How many of us feel discontentment? <laughs> <laughs> Hello to being a woman in, the, yeah. gosh, in 2022. <laughs> Um, and also being human, I think that's completely normal to feel that way. Here's the thing, having everything you ever wanted is not going to make you happy. I think people are really surprised by that because they're like, mm -hmm. but wait, I got the house, I got the family, I got the marriage, the job, but I'm feeling empty. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to this awesome lady is that what does it look like to tend to your soul? Like, what does it look like for you to sit with yourself? Like, what's really going on underneath all of the things, maybe all of the achievements? What's really happening deep down? And what would make you happy? And most women who have everything would say it's the confidence. It's the feeling joyful. Well, then let's ask ourselves, what, what would make me feel happy? What do I need to do more of in my life? Oftentimes it's less achieving and it's more quality time. It's more date nights. It's more spending time with girlfriends. It might be a little bit more traveling. It might be putting spending on pause and not even worrying about any of that and actually really being present in the moment. So I would, I would ask myself, what's really stealing from your happiness? And what would it take for you to be happy? That's not a tangible thing. What's like deep down on the inside that would make your heart happy? I feel like for me, just kind of my experience in this is I remember last year, kind of right before you and I started talking every week, I was like, one thing I asked myself was, you know, I feel like I have like everything I've wanted. Like I have a great job. I'm successful. I have a great family. I have a husband who loves me and supports my business. I have two healthy babies. Like what else could I want? But I quickly realized like I wasn't tending to like my like mental state the way or I was just like, oh, well, this is what's expected of me. And it, it, I wasn't tending to like myself. And so for me, that was like, I need to talk to somebody. I need to get some of these things out and work on like my mindset and figure out the way I can get my brain to work. And, and then it kind of opened up conversation to being like, it's not about having everything. Yeah. There's like more to life. And once I saw that like shift, it, it really even becomes like that stuff I thought was so important and like I had to achieve and I had to do really doesn't matter as if like these other things are so true happening in my life. Yeah. It's like, you can have all these things, but if I don't first have this, then right. what does that even matter? Yes, exactly. So that yeah. was like something I feel like that really kind of helped me kind of shift. And then even kind of taking it back to the values, like I was able to identify like, what are some of my personal values that make me feel really good? And how can I pour more into those things instead of like, worrying about like what society thinks I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. Yes. And for me, that brings the word in my mind of purpose. You know, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, do you feel purposeful? And if you don't, what would bring purpose? What do you love? Again, going back to the values, what makes you tick? What makes you come alive and doing more of those things? Um, sometimes the things that make me the most happiest is like getting my hands all dirty and gardening with my kids, mm -hmm. which like, 
you can do that whether you're rich or poor it doesn't matter but that's that's what makes me come alive being at the beach makes me come alive so oftentimes yeah it's not these tangible things but that's that's it it's really living from a place that is deep in your heart means something to you yeah all right this is when i feel like you and i've talked about a lot and i think this is like especially like moms tend to do this but tips on overcoming overthinking and worry to the point where you miss out on life yeah overthinking man i tell you what (laughs) and yes worrying um as a mom i think i was even telling you last week billy and i were leaving for the weekend and like i'm like the house is going to burn down the kids are going to get in a car wreck at the babysitter like i just my head goes wacky yeah and so part of it is just normalizing that that's normal Mm -hmm. and validating it's okay for you to have those thoughts So we have to get out of overthinking and sometimes just into action. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what the circumstance is. But if I'm overthinking something, what I typically do is I just think move, move my body, go work out, do a walk, go running, organize the house, laundry, like whatever it may be, whatever moving looks like for you. It's basically a form of distraction, but also moving our body just physiologically, it helps Um, And then the worry part is kind of goes back to what you're saying. What we focus on gets bigger. Mm -hmm. Something that I really like to teach my clients, especially around anxiety, is that anxiety is not you. I think we just take it on as like, this is me. I'm worrying and like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck here. Well, that's not the truth. Worry and anxiety is just something that happens to you. It's Mm -hmm. It's not in you. It just happens to you. So for me, I often kind of just see it as something outside of myself that's trying to like barricade, right, my heart. And I just say, no, I'm not going to give into that. And um, I start thinking, what's the worst thing that could happen? What would I do in that scenario and and move on? So it's less um, about giving it, 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 just not giving it attention, honestly. Yeah. What have you found that's been helpful? Um, I think like just like the distraction of not spending too much time in that thought. If you like you don't know you can't predict the future right. you know so there's so many times where i'm like oh i want to take my kids to do that but this could happen and i don't know is this really like safe and i like worry i feel like my worry is more around like safety sure for like my family and like you know i remember when i was pregnant with collins you know it took us like so long to get pregnant we were pregnant it was amazing and the entire pregnancy I was so worried about when she was born that I would be holding her and I would fall and like fall on her Mm -hmm. and she wasn't even born yet, you know? And, and so it just like took over my thoughts and things like that. And even now that I'm a mom, I still kind of have those thoughts, but it's, I'm just like, okay, but that hasn't happened yet. Like, yes. and it's okay. Like I can walk down a set of stairs holding one of the girls and I will be okay. And, mm-hmm. you know, kind of just like getting past that and not letting it harbor in your mind because then I feel like you can spawn from that and then all of a sudden talk yourself out of doing whatever you wanted to Absolutely. go do. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You bring a great point because I, I oftentimes talk about notice that the thought's there, but you don't have to engage with it. Mm-hmm. You, so you can say, oh, wow, that's an interesting thought. Sometimes I'm like, let's just be a detective. Let's just like look at our thinking. And it's like, oh, interesting. I'm like really worried about that. Hmm. Right. All right, moving on. So what do I need to do? <laughs> so we get to choose what we engage with. I think, I think we're taught that we don't. It just happens. But you do. So just notice that the worry thought is there and then keep moving through your day. Right. But don't sit there and have a conversation with it. Yeah. That takes practice. Is for sure. And like allowing the thought to like, like you said, like you're like, this is interesting. I'm aware that I'm having this, but I'm going to move past it. But I'm still aware. Like sometimes I feel like being aware and having that like subconscious thought in the back of your mind can actually sort of like be helpful in some situations, Mm -hmm. especially like around safety. You know, I'm like, okay, we're going to like walk into the store and like what happens if this happens, you know, but then it's like, okay, I'm not going to let that consume me the whole time we're in the store. Yes. But I'm aware of my surroundings Mm -hmm. enough to know, okay, this feels a little weird or whatever the issue may be. Um, So that's something that's 
feel like has helped me try to not just harbor yes in the worrying. There's this thing called rumination. I'm, I'm sure many of us have heard of it. And if you haven't, it's very helpful to know. Ruminating is just taking a thought, chewing on it, spitting it back out, chewing on it, spitting it back out. And what ends up happening is you get into this downward spiral. And so the more you ruminate on it, the more anxious, the more obsessed, the more anxious, the more obsessed. And before you know it, like you said, you're not doing an action. You're not going somewhere that you really think. So being aware allows you metacognition, thinking about your thinking, being aware allows for you to not ruminate. Mm -hmm. So you just want to stop yourself in the rumination process, write it down. What are you most afraid of? And then just try to move on. Mm -hmm. And it takes practice. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. So what about how much self-care is too much before it's not self-care anymore and causes stress. Yeah. So we kind of like talked a little bit about this one beforehand. And I feel like what we, what we came up with, what this meant, I feel like is really beneficial. Yeah. Um, so I guess what would be, what are, what are your thoughts here? Yeah. So this would probably be something where you're trying to do self-care, but it's actually really stressful. Like meaning it's not Mm -hmm. really helping you at all. So, um, you know, there was a recent thing that we did in in my community for Uncommon Grit and it was called 75 Hard. Mm -hmm. And it is a pretty intense thing you have to do. It's a challenge for 75 days. And for some of us, it was awesome. And for others of us, people were like really stressed out, stressing their bodies out. It was just basically breaking apart. Mm -hmm things that were important for them. So whenever you feel that you're doing something that's supposed to be life giving to you and it's not, and it's stressful and it's becoming more of a headache and just one more thing on your to-do list, I would question if I were you, I would just question, why am I actually really doing this? Right. What's my motive behind this? Am I trying to do it because it's really something I want to do? Am I trying to do it because I want to get better in this area? But I would just pause gosh, there's so much, there's so much goodness in just pausing. If we just all just pause for a minute and just like, hmm, interesting. Why am I doing this? Why am I thinking that? Do I, is this really the action I want to take? But pausing and just asking myself, what is it that I'm hoping for? And why am I not getting that end result? And if I'm not getting the end result that I really want, then what type of self-care do I need that's going to give me results? Sometimes the best thing we can ask ourselves is like, what do I need? What do I need right now? I think all of us, including myself, I just bypass my needs all the time. I'm like, I don't know. We just got to get this done, this done, this done, this done. But when I stop and just I'm quiet with my heart and I say, Jen, like, what do you need right now? I'm like, oh, interesting. I just actually need a meal without anyone interrupting me. Right. <laughs> right? It's like so simple. But I'm like trying to do all these things, like make, give me relief. And I'm like, that's not actually helping. So um, in that scenario, I would just ask yourself, what really are you looking for? And how are you uniquely going to meet that need for yourself? And maybe not borrow from other people or see what someone else is doing. That's maybe their self-care that actually right. really doesn't align with you. I think the like borrowing somebody else's like ideas or what works for them. Like that is one thing I feel like that has been a huge takeaway for me because like what works for somebody else might not work for you and that's okay. Yes. I also think like self care is so interesting because there's so many different like forms of it. And sometimes I even feel like society is a little too much like you deserve self care, like take a break. You deserve this. But then it's like what the level of, what it is you deserve can you have to be careful of like where you're letting that define Mm self-care for you because it might not be what you are thinking you have to do like I have to get a massage every single week but I'm going broke doing that and it's like well let's figure out what self-care is for you and how that's gonna like actually like care for yourself yes And make sure that like, you're not just doing whatever society is like telling you to do. Yes. Yeah. What really uniquely is going to refuel you, Mm -hmm. make you feel refreshed. Yeah. Make you wake up in the morning and say, I have enough to give. I think so many of us, especially as women, we give out of an empty cup and that's like my biggest no, no, I do it all the time. And so anytime I feel myself, I mean, that's the number one thing I'll say to my husband, I, I, my cup has to be filled right now and that gets so on empty. So it's like knowing that, but then also what does that look like where it doesn't yeah, cost a ton of money and it, it's, it aligns with my family structure and the time that I do have. We want to make sure that kind of going back to that word of intentionality that we're super intentional about how we're refueling ourselves and making sure that it works for us. Totally. Well, I think this episode has been 
very thorough and there's been so much good conversation and just advice. There were several times when you were talking that I was like, I'm going to go back and pause and re-listen to what she (laughs) said there because I need to actually do that for myself. So I really think that our listeners will get a ton out of today's episode. Awesome. Well, it's been so fun. I have loved being here. I just love your team. I love the community that you have developed. You guys are awesome, all the listeners. Um, it's been it's been so fun. So I'm just honored yeah. you had me on. Of course. Well, Jen, will you tell our listeners who are maybe hearing you for the first time where they can find you on Instagram and on your website? And we'll, of course, leave all that information in the show notes. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Jen Bowie. And then my website is jenbowie.com where you can just find all my information there. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And to everybody listening, we appreciate you so much. And we hope that this episode fuels your cup and that you, you know, are just able to take something away from this that's going to be super meaningful to you. Until next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I can't wait to continue these conversations with you over on Instagram. Make sure to follow along at Life with Loverly. Until next time.